don't forget to like and subscribe. You can also listen to this on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we have a PayPal account for any donations that you'd like to give. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Welcome, everybody, to the Gate Expectations podcast, where I bring in a weekly guest, talk all things Yu-Gi-Oh!, and get to know a little more about each person I talk to. It's the only Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast that is run by a full-fledged journalist such as myself. This is episode 39. If you haven't checked it out yet, you can check out earlier podcasts with guests like Crush Cards, Ruggles, Yassine, Pack, Distant Coder, and many more. My guest for this week is a former U.S. national champion. He's got multiple premier event tops, and he's a really good friend of mine. It is Corn Pops, a.k.a. Sean Montague. Sean, man, thank you so much for coming on to my podcast. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, man. Absolutely, bro. We, we've been friends for like a really long time. And, you know, there was one question that's always plagued me. I can't believe I've never asked this to you, man. But w- what's with the, the nickname of Corn Pops that you've had? So early on, when we... um first got into the game it was me and my uh my bro evan you remember you met him back in the day uh mm-hmm. we um we first got into the game we went to the regionals and there was just a bunch of you know legendary michigan guys there you know we were just in awe they were so good at the game you know we were we were crap you know we didn't even know what we were doing and they're like uh they just made the nickname for us potato and cedar i don't know and it just stuck you know we met them the first day they were great guys and they just messed around with it, and we loved it, you know. They were total goofballs, you know, and it was straight up our alley, you know. <laughs> and we're just – these guys are great players, and they're just total goofballs. And, you know, we just had – we really just kicked it off the first day, you know. Mm-hmm. Mateo, Cedar, that was when they were real close. And McGarrett and Paul McCann and the whole – you know, the whole – everyone. Thunderpants was there. Uh, Jeff, everybody. It was great, man. Yeah. And, uh, all those guys, all those guys are fantastic guys, by the way. Like each of them also have like premier event tops as well. So like, they, right. they're like awesome guys. Like they're also like really good at the oh, game. Oh, amazing. Well. It was, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, you know, the guys I read about like a couple months ago are here in my face. I'm like, eh. I'm like, you know, I'm like, wow, I really couldn't believe it. You know, potato mm-hmm. with all the tops and, and um, it just stuck, you know, that everyone had a nickname. That was how they did it. You know, mm-hmm. everyone was something, you know. And it just it just stuck, you know. We were bigger and stuff, you know. It was easy to to make fun of and have fun, you know. <laughs> so we always just poked fun with it. It was just a cool thing, you know. And it just stuck. It was so cool. Like at the regional, you know, like uh, his was my buddy's was pork chop, and I was corn pops. You know, that was the big thing. Mm-hmm. It was just a thing. It was the easy way to find us. You know, you say one. Well, you know, it was just simple. It made it a lot easier. Everything, you know. It was fun, yeah. man. Oh man, and I love that gang so much. Like those guys were oh, so dude. fun to hang out with. And, dude, man. and we also went out to dinner too. We went out to to Swiss Chalet, I think one uh, one night after. Yep. I think it was a Toronto event as well. I think it was mm-hmm. you, me, Cedar, Paul McCann, uh, Chris McGarrett. I can't yep. remember who else was, if anyone else was there. But man, that was a fun dinner we had in Toronto. Oh man, I remember it was it was really a blast, man. I remember that my um my first regional was there. We um. <laughs> Um, for, uh, it was for the new company. Remember after they, um, whatever happened with UDE and it went over and we had to, we had to get our new card and I ended up getting a Canadian card for, to play my, my right. events. So, I, so every time I went to like nationals and everything, like when I won, I would, they're like, how do you have a Canadian card, dude? You're not even from there. You don't live there. I'm like, oh, I was, I was that into it. I went to the regional, the first one. <laughs> But yeah, the first one I remember it was just a really cool regional, you know, all the legends, Dale and all the guys you re- you write about for years, you know. Mm-hmm. We had been more into it. You're reading about, you know, like a maze, Lazaro, Bolito, you know, the whole gang, Matt Petal, all of them. And I um I took Gladiator Beast and didn't do well, but it was just fun, you know, hanging with the gang. I met you shortly after. It was great, you know, it was unbelievable. That's what drew us into the game, you know, that that first regional. We don't go to that, you know. It just probably never happens that way, you know. And it was such like a star-studded lineup lineup of people that would come from, like, go to these Toronto regions. Like, we would oh attract my people God, from, it like, was unbelievable. The, like the New York area would come over. Oh, and man. then we also attract people from, like, as, as from where you are, like the Detroit area as well. Mm-hmm. Like, we we attracted a lot of people that that came to those regions, and we and it was it was almost like a YCS in itself, just playing at that event. 
Yeah, I, I'll never forget. I was like my first couple rounds. I'd, I'd gotten pretty good at the game. I knew like what was going on and stuff. And I'm like, man, these guys are really good. Like the first couple rounds on, I'm like, I'm having problems. You know, you don't expect that early. You know, yeah. early in a tournament, you want to coast. You know, but it's like, man, in Toronto, there was just no let up. Man, those guys are phenomenal players. Mm-hmm. All of them, you know, in their own right. Aaron Noel. Um, there's just a million of them. And yes. it's just their whole gang, you know, they were just so good and competitive <laughs> and always in the mix, always building great decks, everything, you know. Yeah, spe- speaking of Aaron, like he was the he was the one who won the uh the Canadian Nationals, but that was the same year that when you won nationals itself with yes. uh, with X Sabres. Yeah. Um I, I did a little background research. I was talking to uh you know, Rob Cedar, because it goes a good friend of both of ours, mm-hmm. and um he told me there was a really intriguing story behind uh why you chose uh X Sabres to run that event, uh, yeah. Which which you won with, uh. So you know, what, is there like a cool little story behind? Yeah, all that? there's there's a really cool story, and it never really got said because you know they don't ask much. Nothing, you know, we don't do stuff like this. It wasn't really common then, you know. We didn't. We were just playing, you know. It was just fun. It was. We, no one ever knew we were even gonna look back on this, you know. But it's just the game's gotten popular, and it's fun, you know. Talking about old stuff, and everyone remembers it, and it was great. So um. So Cedar, a uh, week before, he played – you remember how Canadian Nationals were before the other Nationals before? Yep. So it was just, like, a lot different. He um he went and did pretty well with x Sabers. I think he topped or got deep. But um he ended up telling me he – a lot of people were on Infernities, and I was too. And uh, they just thought it was going to be, like, really good Infernity. Mm-hmm. And Cedar told me, like, yeah, man, this deck bricks out. You got to play Sabres. You know, and he was right. Uh, I talked to him. I was fish bowling. I didn't even play test much. I missed the jump before uh, at Chicago. And um, I read the Chicago coverage, and I'm like, man, this Infernity deck looks really good. You know, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I had all the cards. I didn't even have all the x saber cards. I was missing, like, a couple Dark Souls, some sarcophaguses. I'm like, I'm like, man, I don't know what to do. I have this deck. It's so easy, you know. It's F- OTKs. It's, you know, the whole nine. And uh, I end up um, going with it. I'm like, last second, I'm like, I borrow the cards. A couple guys let me borrow them. And uh, I almost didn't even have the cards to use. Ooh. And uh, a guy let me borrow two sarcophagus this last minute. I remember I, it was like the last piece I needed or whatever. And I ended up buying them off him, like, after the tournament. I, when I won it, I'm like, oh, I'll buy them. I'll buy them now, you know. I don't want to break the winning deck. <laughs> and Because um, that's just, you know, you can't do that. So uh, Yeah, that's true. So, um, so he let me borrow them. I'm stoked, you know. I play. I, I just fish bowled a bunch, and it just seemed so consistent. Every hand was, like, a way to the rescue cat, you know. And I'm like, I'm reading the matches. And really smart people, like Billy Brake. I really looked up to them, you know. Spicer, he was incredible, you know. He was unbelievable at the game, and I just I'm like I'm just gonna go with it. What Cedar and them say, they're so smart and intelligent and been in the game. Because at that time, I thought I was like due for a top, you know. Like I didn't think I was gonna win. You know, you never think you're gonna win your first one. Yeah, it's like me, me and Fraser talk about that still, like to this, to this day, you know, because he was another one that won like his first top, you know. Yeah, Fraser it's Smith. Just, yeah, he's yeah, a good, okay. he's another good buddy. He um, yep, he won his first top in Atlanta with uh. Gravekeeper, he ended up actually beating uh, my deck that we put together. We actually copied, uh, we played Jeff in the uh, tournament like the week before and Jeff was playing like the plant deck everyone was using which is like a couple cool tech cards and, and they were really good and I'm like, Jeff beat me with it in game three like in a top for a big tournament and I'm like, I, I think his choices are better and we, we took his deck, me and my bro Evan and uh, we both topped and Evan lost to Fraser game three, like a crazy game that they still talk about. And he, um, he drew game three, Fraser topped it, just a crazy combo of cards and won and won the jump his first top. And, uh, yeah, it was history. He, um, he was one of the first guys, to, uh, like me, you know, he won on his first one. There was plenty of guys that did it, but it's just, it's hard. You know, you don't expect to win. You just, you think you're going to lose it's like a great player, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I got lucky. Obviously, you know, I played amazing players that were way better than me, you know, like Corn. But, you know, the stars line, and we did it. It was cool. 
Yeah, yeah, but so like, considering that was your first top man, what what was your reaction to yourself when you like actually like, beat out uh, man. Chris Arantes and and won the whole dude? Event? I was so nervous, like getting, like before that, you know, like I didn't even think I was gonna top, you know, it was like it felt like a long shot, like just a big long shot. It was like uh, I was seven and two day one, you know, I lost like a tough match late, and I ended up losing round one. A lot of people don't uh, know that, you know, that don't know modern Yu Gi Oh. Um, I lost round one to a chaos like stun deck. It was just playing beat down stun cards, you know. And I just I, I lost to myself. I didn't draw anything. I'm not you know discredit him. You know his deck was cool, but uh, I lost to just drawing no playable cards. You know I didn't have a chance, and uh, I was really down. You know because everyone's because you know how it worked at a tournament. You you go around you see all your buddies. You know, and you just you feel like such a loser. You know if you lose round one. You just feel like a total like scrub. You're like, man, Nationals. I, I was like the only one from Michigan that lost, you know? Yep. I'm talking to everybody. I'm like, man, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was so let down, dude. I was, you know, it was my second National. The um, year before was the first, 09, when uh, Ferber won. It was, I used uh, Synchro Cat and didn't do well. And um, I was just so let down, you know? I lost my first round. I'm like, man, I mean, maybe I was supposed to play Inferno, you know? I'm like, Man, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. Guy. I, lost a, I lost a Doom Caliber Knight and Thunder King, and then just kept rolling, kept rolling. The ball kept rolling. I started the puzzle came together, you know. Luckily, if the because the couple of the games were real close early, you know, mm-hmm. you lose one of those and the tournament's done. You know, you're not gonna gauntlet through uh, twelve straight rounds. And I played like seventeen rounds. You know, it's just it's not plausible. You know. Yeah. So I was real lucky. I uh, my deck withstood that, and then uh, day two, I won the two. I was really nervous, but I was really confident. And um, just everything, you know, when you're playing in those big events, is just to look confident and act, you know, act your part, you know, like you want to win. Yeah. So I so I came in really confident for some reason round uh, day two and uh, won the first two rounds and um, got in top. Was super pumped just to hear my name, you know, called. I felt like super accomplished in my head, you know. Mm-hmm. And because, uh, like, a bunch of guys top that I really looked up to. Like, if you look at the list of names, it's incredible. Like, I can't even – oh, man, it was just, like, 30 guys that are just legends, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, just over and over. Like, Jerry top, uh, Sack, Patrick Hoban, who's just, like, the best guys in the game. And I'm like, man, I, I think I got a small shot, but I don't know. And uh, got lucky the first one, and then – I was clearly outmatched by Corn, you know, he was the goat in the game. Mm-hmm. And uh game three I got him. He uh he dust shooted me, he knew all my cards even. And I uh top deck bottomless. He had I knew what he was gonna do. I knew he had a gladiator play set up. Mm-hmm. And basically if I got this bottomless off, he lost and I got it off and there's like a famous video where he um me and all my buddies know about it and laugh about it. He uh, he like freaks out. It shows it like on video when I drew it. And, I was all excited because he, he admitted defeat, you know. He's like, you beat him. And I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, the guy I looked up to for all the years, you know, the small ground, the deck box, everything, the, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, I beat him. I did it. I'm like, man, I was already in cloud nine. You know, I'd already felt like I won. <laughs> yeah, it was so it was a complete surprise to me when I when I saw you win because I didn't think you had topped anything before that. So yeah. when I saw him, like, man, Sean Monaghan, like, wait, Corn Pops looked it up. Yeah. Like, oh my god, it is Corn Pops. Corn Pops is top, and oh my god, he yeah. won the event. Oh man, man. I was, I was it was so unbelievable. Stoked. Yeah, I was so because it happened so quick. You know, I was like, wow. it, exactly that, and like you know, it it only takes one day to completely like turn your whole entire life around when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, and all right, of a sudden. Right, because it's all in one day. Your whole, your whole career is in one day, you know. It's yeah. Like one lucky turn. Yeah. Man. And, and, uh, I remember the night before, I was so nervous, and that's why it all hit me at once. I was, I didn't sleep much. I was just overtired in the hotel with all the buddies, you know. We're all talking about strategy and stuff, and uh, I just couldn't sleep much, you know. I was so nervous, you know, just thinking about the tournament and wanting to do well and thinking about my opponents and what they were going to do and how I could combat that, you know, all night in my head, just thinking that. Mm-hmm. That's how I always, like, approach the game, like, with a plan, you know. It was always what kind of kept me one step ahead. So, um, yeah, I went in and got lucky, you know. And uh, top eight, a lot of people don't know. Uh, the guy came up to me the event after, and uh, and he's like, man, you know, if I just bombed that, uh, that token with that Brionic, you couldn't have won. I kept rereading the match, and I'm like, 
I'm like, there's no way that, that you can win if I just timed it. And I'm like, yeah, man, I knew, I couldn't believe you did it. I was like, he just made Grant Kelly was a great player and is right, but he just made like a uh, a blunder, you know, just a quick blunder. Like when you're in the yep. moment, just the the smallest error is just everything in like the championships, you know. So uh, it was deciding for worlds, you know. So it was everything. Uh, so he, uh, yeah, he made the blunder. He left it in D, and I went for it, and he didn't have an answer, and I won. So. Was yeah, yeah, because that was a feature match too. So it was like maybe the pressure got got to him a little bit, but yeah, it's it funny because like, because uh, game one I was trying to say something to him to get in his head. I'm like, uh, and they say it in the match. They they mentioned how I said something to him about like playing my cards differently, mm-hmm. and he um and he said something back too. Funny, he was trying to. I asked him like if he had like a dust shoot or something, and he's like maybe or something. He like asked me if I had something. You know, we were just mm-hmm. trying to trick each other into thinking stuff. And, uh, yeah, game three, he made the big blunder. I won that. And then there's a really funny story for top four. So uh, all the big pros, Billy, Jeff, and everybody, they're all clowning on the sideline. Uh, and they're, they started betting on the people in top, you know, because we're probably a bunch of nobodies at the time. You know, it's just like a fair – you know what I mean? It's just a fair fight. And and they're uh, – and Billy says, I'm going to take the kid, with, the big kid with the spell ground. And I'll never <laughs> forget he – uh. He walked up to me. I won my top eight match. And I'm like, oh, my God, the legend's walking up to me. And he says, uh, he says, dude, the guy with the brown spell grounds playing Gladiator Beast. So I'm like, I got my mind down. And I think the guy with the, the brown spell grounds playing Glads, I'm going to totally, every move I'm, I do is get different now, you know? Yeah. So I freaking play the guy with the brown spell ground, and he's playing X-Saber. Oh. And then, because two of, two of them had brown spell grounds, which is obviously uncommon, and people don't use them, you know? Yeah. Everyone yeah. used gray. It was the thing. So I'm like, man, I'm like, and the guy actually did like the slow X saber plays where you would never know. Like he, I don't, he didn't know that I knew that even, but he just, his hand happened to be like, it looked like a gladiator deck. Like he started off with like a set and like two, you know what I mean? Two back rows. And I'm like, man, it's top Lomas. So I made like the totally incorrect move and game one just got like punted off. And they're like, guys are saying in the comments, like, man, why did he say that? And they didn't know that I knew that, you know, yeah. that I thought that. And, it was just a total blunder because of it. But luckily, I won two and three. I got lucky and blew them out, drew the perfect combination. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, in the finals, I just blew them out. It was a total blunder, you know, just got lucky. And it seemed like the pressure just had got to him, and it, he was okay with second, you know. Yeah, and I know that you, that was an e- quick two oh by the way. And I think you forgot what like a Dark Soul search uh, in uh, in game two, which I, I don't know if like the pressure again like really got to him or not. But um, like he didn't like play like to the best of his ability, I would say. Yeah, he forgot a Dark Soul search, but there's a funny story to that. Mm-hmm. They they also tried to say that I forgot a Dark Soul search, and they rule sharked me. Honestly, they um, I was a quicker player. If you know this about me, like um. Mm-hmm. Some people play a little slower, like my like one of my good friends, Joe, in the game, G. Orlando. He'll take his time and make sure it's the correct play, you know. Mm-hmm. He wants to always make the right move, which is fine. There's nothing. That's perfect. That's fine. I'm. That's, everyone's okay with that. It's great. And I just always my, – my notch was I just wanted to play quicker. And uh, I remember I did it really quick. My deck was there, and I picked it up. I said, end phase search. And they're like, no, no, no. They start freaking. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, dude. I didn't even end. I'm getting my deck, you know, but they rule shark me and mm-hmm. I had to respect the game and you know, I'm I'm a fan of the game too. I understand it's you know, it's good to read, it's fun stuff, you know. So uh so they they played it as it was and I ended up still winning, so it worked out. But yeah, man, it happened a couple times, you know, guys play seventeen rounds, you know. You weird Yeah, but yeah I, man, I, I, it was fun. And and then after that, man, that's where you like you started to like bring off like a bunch of tops after that, man. And then you started like yeah. ma- making these tops. Like you made a couple in Toronto. I know you made one in yep. in Jersey as well. Yeah. So like, um, like like that event really just kind of like catapulted like it was what huge. was your, your, your man, career. That's how it is when you come out winning. You know, you just, it it got catapults you. You know, mm-hmm. everyone plays different against you. They all want a shot at the champ. You know, they want to crush me. You know. So, so many times a guy makes an error that he should just knows he shouldn't make almost, you know? Yeah. He's like, oh, I just got to get him. So, I'm going to do this outrageous play that makes no sense, but it, I'm going to do it. And, you know, just always played to my favor, you know? Just always would seem like I was lucky. And really, they're just putting the game off, you know, and it's easy. Mm-hmm. But that's just how it is. Uh, 
so I um I ended up getting a bunch of really good players in my friend group, like Joe, Fraser, and they would help me with like deck choices and like a bunch of the Michigan guys. So it was like it was so easy, you know. My best friend Evan, uh, he was amazing in the game. You know, he had three tops and he was really phenomenal. He was a local legend. You know, he was. We were the original, you know, gang pork chops, uh, corn pops. You know, and once he started topping, I was topping. It was just, you know, it was great. The whole, the whole state of Michigan was, you know, everybody had tops. Brandon Smith, everybody, man. Mark Johnson, Paul Blair. It was incredible, man. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, you, this has been like a common theme now with a, a lot of like the Yu-Gi-Oh players of past, past Yu-Gi-Oh included. Like, yeah, I know you don't like play the game anymore. But you're mm-hmm. still at least like involved in some way, shape, or form. Because I knew you played the the good mm-hmm. format tournament that was yesterday. Yep. But you're also like heavily involved with uh, with Joe Giolando too, and and a lot of stuff that he exactly. Does. Yeah, we're um, yeah, we're we're still doing a lot of stuff on his channel, and we're still doing a bunch of modern Yu Gi Oh stuff like back in the day, mm-hmm. like original Yu Gi Oh. Like we just don't like the new game, you know, like what it is and what it's been the last couple of years. So uh, once I seen there was an interest in it, I just didn't know poker for so many years and um i had quit in what 13 my last tournament was the one uh hoban won the chicago Mm -hmm. uh so i just i was out the game a while and i I didn't hear no one talking about the old stuff you know it was just seemed like everyone liked the new stuff and yeah once i heard uh guys like dale you know it's really intriguing you start hearing that name again you know yep and it's like uh chris provick and just a lot of the legends you know and it's really for me it just you know it makes me come out of the woodwork you know yeah, man. So, why don't you just tell me more in depth of uh, what you do with uh, Joe and his channel? Yeah, he takes it like, uh, you know, like almost like we're the student. He's the teacher, and it's just so like there's so much to learn. Like even a great player, you know, just the way he does it, he's so good at like presenting, you know, because he's a teacher or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, we're just we're looking at like format to format, deck to deck. Um, we're gonna do matches, deck profiles. Um, He'll do some random openings, stuff like that. Uh, eventually, I'm sure there'll be live play when there's a chance. You know, there's, that'll be a while down the road. Um, but, yeah, man, it's just really cool stuff. Stuff we wanted to do back in the day that we couldn't, you know, mm-hmm. that uh, no one had the time for. Or, you know, just wasn't time. And COVID happened, and people dove back into it, and there was just a big love for it. People love it, you know. Mm-hmm. Everyone's hitting me up about it, you know, left and right, like, so many different guys and it's just great you know it's fun yeah, stuff. so what so what gauge your interest in uh at least like, kind of working with joe to kind of help him like with his youtube channel and just kind of like work through all these like old formats that uh, that the, what he likes to analyze and go through the history of on his channel oh well um we've always been really close like in the game he uh that's another fun story he built my hero deck that i topped one of the torontos with yeah he, uh, he was just a great guy you know i just loved how cool he was and nice so at the, every tournament we would talk and hang out. And every time I see him, uh, we just you know hang hang out and really click. You know, it was just like a a thing that happened. You know, he was such a great guy. You know, and it uh it's perfect for me. So I'm like uh, I'm he hit me up. He's like one day, he's like, "What you want to do a game and uh, record and see how it goes?" And we're like, "Yeah, we'll try it." You know, I was new to it. I never uh, had done it. I've just played a lot of poker online. So I'm like, I know all about like Twitch and discord and all that so i'm like uh, i'm like whatever we'll give it a whirl you know mm-hmm. and people were commenting and liking and loving it so we're like we're just gonna keep it going you know mm-hmm. i'm gonna keep trying to pump up his channel and there's just a big demand we love your channel and spicers and the goat one just everything going on it's just great you know mm-hmm. whatever can promote the game we want to you know just sort of promote it more and more you know like what we lived and what we did you know yeah, and even though yeah, I know you don't play like uh, current Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, there, um, is is there like a certain draw to just going back to like the past where like Yu-Gi-Oh was big, like when you yeah. were playing with it, just, just to kind of go back there and just kind of like relive all that again? Definitely, it's just it's cool, you know, like a blast from the past, sort of. Mm-hmm. You know, it's cool, like you said, it's just it's different, you know, and it's cool because it feels different now because it's not back then. You know, you're not as like well sharp and. You know, like you're not playing with the cards, or you know, it's just different. Yeah, it, it's always like that. It's always like current Yu-Gi-Oh, like compared to past Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like it, it's it's not the same game. It doesn't feel like the same game at all. There's a whole new, different kind of skill set that you got to learn, and 
it, mm-hmm. it can it can be good and bad in the sense for like older players when they try to get back like, when they try to get back in the game. It's like, man, I I think I would have been better off like not playing the game at all to learn this game, or rather than like being like years past. It's like it's like a like Guitar Hero, but a lot of guitars would say like, yeah, I wish I just actually didn't know how to play guitar at all to like to be better at Guitar Hero as opposed to like knowing this because you have like a different mindset in your head of like knowing like what to do and whatnot. It's, it's kind of like. Yeah, and you can make the argument too for like current Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, I don't know if you've ever tried to dabble in current Yu-Gi-Oh or not, but you know, that's just a, a, a common thought that a lot of like older players would have about the game. Yeah, I have not tried to play current. Uh, I've watched a couple games that people I know have been watching or been in, and it just looks it looks so crazy and insane. Like the fields and monsters, you know how it is. Like you said, just nothing's like when you play or when you did it. You know. Mm-hmm. And it's just uh, stuff changes, stuff progresses, and it makes sense. You know, it's just life. Um, they were talking about it in a Magic video where uh, they were comparing, like, the two games. Me and Joe were just talking about that. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about, like, the big difference, you know, and they said in Yu-Gi-Oh, just how the power cards change, you know, and they just keep getting better and better, you know. So uh, mm-hmm. it's just a constant of that happening. Mm-hmm. So from format to format, you're just going to see – the nuts and the best, the best possible thing, and it's going to get better, and it's not going to change, and that's just what it is. So we're taking it back. We're going to play the old formats, and we're going to just live in what it was, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, we know a lot of people don't even know it, and are, so it's cool, you know? Some people are learning, and it's like a blast for the past for some people, and it's really been great, man. Oh, what, uh, what have been some of your favorite formats? Um, so I really liked the Tangu plant. That I topped a couple times with a lot. There was a big consensus that me, Joe, and a lot of the really great players, Frazier, we all thought that that format when Billy won, um, really showed a lot of skill because a lot of great players topped. Like there was a lot of great players topping left and right. Like you would see like the best. The list mm-hmm. would come out and it would be twenty great players because they all played plants and just skill showed. You know, yeah. when to when to activate your C's and when to chain the veiler and when to use the book. So it's just, it showed that the, the talent of this, you know, the skill gap in players. So a lot of us viewed that one as one of the best. Uh, I really liked Teledad when I came. My first jump ever was Detroit, obviously, because that's where I'm from. Uh, I uh, I got into the game at the Troop Dupe format was my first. Um, I didn't play the jump. I was playing locals and I had just crap cards and I built up and, uh, I ended up having a Teledad deck. Um, my dad actually bought one pack and he pulled because he knew I was really into the game. And this one yep. thing, my parents really supported me. You know, like uh, when you're younger and play, you need support, you know. Yep. And uh, our parents were always really cool like with the traveling because, you know, I wouldn't even have won. No, you know, I wouldn't have had a chance. That was why I actually had to sit out the Chicago jump because they were just, you know, they didn't want me to go to too many. Yeah, because yeah, right. I had to miss school and stuff, so it was like it was you know it was touchy. So they ended up bending it, letting me go, and uh, like I said, my dad pulled that crush for me early, and uh, oh I, I, wow, yeah, he he bought me one pack. He pulled a crush card, and we we couldn't believe it. Me and my friends, it was like so like sweet, you know. So I ended up topping a regional with uh, Teledad. I mm-hmm. had uh, a dark arm, and uh, I didn't do well. I just top aided. Tateo ended up blowing me out actually, like a local legend. Yeah. And uh, so I went to the jump. I took Teledad with one dark arm and a crush. And uh, I went six and three, my first tournament, my first big uh, premier event. Yeah. And uh, I was just stoked. You know, it was fun. It was just competing. And uh, it was hard, though, man. Let me tell you, you because a lot of the Canadian guys came, <laughs> and they are really great players. Let me tell you, it was a battle. Oddly enough, so, uh, that was the that was the same record that I had on my first uh, really my first, uh, first jump. Yeah, six and three. It was a uh, cool. showing jump Hamilton. Oddly enough, so you know that's yeah. something in common we have. That's cool. But uh, so yeah, I, um, I was just drawing in. It was such a fun tournament, you know. Cedar top, potato top, and uh, it was cool. Mm-hmm. So we uh we had a blast. We didn't do well, and uh, we went to nationals. Uh, didn't do great, but had a lot of fun. Really loved it. Loved Pittsburgh. Um, the first nationals. It was really cool, you know, they had that dual terminal and everyone was chilling and stuff. And, uh, yeah, so we went, we loved that one, even though it sucked. Like, yeah, that was, I couldn't win. It was a tough format, you know, the dark strike and everything. It was crazy. 
Okay. Okay. I was. I was. Is that dark side? Because I was thinking Pittsburgh was the first time, the first event where they combined both the U.S. and the Canadian nationals together. Um, had, that's in Pittsburgh. So it it would be like the one before that. I would think that would be. Uh, yeah, Chris Ferber won be... the one in Pittsburgh. Oh right. Okay, that was in Pittsburgh. So yeah, they had and then, two and then... national champs in a row in Pittsburgh. Oh, um, no, 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 the no, one no. I won was Minnesota. Right, right. Okay, okay. So I, I won got the it. last one that was before they combined. Right, okay, got it. Got it me. was like 1,200 people or something. Mm-hmm. 17 rounds, uh, 12 rounds of Swiss or something. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, or 11 rounds of Swiss. But, um, but yeah, they, uh, they, they changed that, and that was crazy because then it got even harder, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, obviously Canadians are great players and the field's bigger. So, um, yeah, I uh, just love the game. It was really interesting, you know. Mm-hmm. I uh, really, I couldn't believe I won, like I said. And uh, we were just on cloud nine the whole time, really. You know, everyone coming up to me, like, loving it. You know, me telling them, like, what happened and how lucky I was and how mad corn got, you know. It was just good memories. And then I went to Worlds and – uh I went to Worlds and I took Gladiator Beast and I ended up losing to Frog FDK. Obviously, it was like the best deck by a landslide, but I just didn't know the combos and yep. didn't like the deck much or didn't even like like the draw, like the what it was. You know, obviously, me and Joe talk about this a lot, like <laughs> how it was the best deck, but it's like an FDK, so it's just like cheesy and corny, you know, so it's like... For me, it just takes it out. It takes like the skill, the quote unquote, like skill out of the game. You know, like, yeah. when you're just when you're just beating me or yourself, and I'm not, I can't even play cards. You know, so I didn't play it, and uh, I went uh, two and three or something, just scrubbed out and didn't top, and uh, and uh, yeah, like you said, got lucky at Atlanta, topped with the plants, and then uh, I had a big run uh, in Toronto. Uh, with the plants again, the different plant Tengu plant. So that's where we were at with the, uh, my favorite format. Mm-hmm. So Billy won, and I ended up top eighting. I lost to the Tyler Nolan kid, and it was a really tough match because uh, we're in game two, and uh, there's a judge watching because uh, this judge was my buddy. Uh, he was a guy from Chicago, and he was just a really good guy. And uh, for whatever reason, he's just watching the match at the time. And the kid, uh, I tack his Tangu, and he uh, he searches one, and I kill, I kill another one, and he forgets to search Ooh. another Tangu. So and the guy's watching, so I don't say anything because I'm just playing. I was just I play really quick and in flow, mm-hmm. and I did notice it, but uh, which I am supposed to say something technically, but honestly, I was in a really rough spot, so I'm like, I'm just gonna see what happens, you know. Yeah, but uh, the kid drew and he kept playing, and he made a move and passed, and I was about to win, and they're like, "Whoa, wait, he forgot Tango, and that's mandatory." And I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." He's, and we're talking about it, and we're like, uh, "We're like, so wait, what happens?" Because I didn't say anything, and he didn't say anything. Yeah. So they actually ended up letting him take his card back that he drew because the judge watched and he apparently knew what it was. And they let him take it back and get his Tango so he wouldn't die. And he drew another card that was, like, a really good card to stop where, where I was at in the game. Yeah. And he ended up literally winning that game. And it was, like, it just sucked because I came so close, you know. Like, I know it was a mistake on him and it shouldn't have happened. But, it like, it just sucked when you're so close, you know. So I always wanted to win another one, you know. Like, I know it's greedy and crazy, but it's, like, you always want another, you know. Yeah, of to course. Taste, to taste it again. And it's, like, that one just felt so close. And it was, like, man. Man, if we could just go back, you know, the one one play of the one game. I really wanted to play Billy, you know, and take have our shot and have our big game, you know. Mm-hmm. I felt like it would have been huge because um, the next tournament I topped again, the very next one next month, uh, it was Columbus. I was like almost undefeated in Swiss. I lost to like uh, Walter Chan. He was another Canadian great player. Yep. Uh, great guy. He he destroyed me. Honestly, I went like ten and one and just lost to him. He like drew the nuts, like one for one, like the whole nine every game and uh. And I ended up losing in top again, just like a really sick. I played Le Martina. Um, I beat him in Swiss. And then in top, uh, he just I just dud it out. I just didn't draw anything. Like, he, yeah, his deck was good, like the hero deck, but I just didn't draw anything, and I just dud it out and lost. So I was super disappointed again because Billy won again, and I wanted to play him again. And I'm like, man, I messed up another shot, you know. Yeah. 
I just can't seem to win one of these again. And, uh, <laughs> and um, what was my next top? I know I, you said Rhode Island. It's hard to even remember some of them. You know, they're such a blur now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I really like that Rhode Island. I um, oh, no, that Rhode Island, it was New Jersey. I top New Jersey with um, the deck Fraser had built me. Fraser built a Dino Rabbit uh, fist deck, um, bear deck. And it was just teching like a bunch of really cool cards and choices, and it was it was incredible. Like honestly, props to him. He was a great deck builder. You know, he really knew what he was doing with the cards. So he um he shot me the list, and I just went with it. I had the cards, and it looked cool. I'm like, whatever, I'll give it a try. And uh, this is another crazy thing. Uh, Tyree ended up winning the whole tournament, and he said this. It's still in his report. Um, I had him like pinned down. The game was over. Like, I was about to win, like, for sure, like, 99%. It was over. And he drew, like, the perfect card, the snowman eater, and he just mounts, like, the craziest comeback ever. And he goes on to win the jump. And I'm just devastated, you know. I'm like, man, I was inches away again, you know. <laughs> and that's just how hard it is to win, you know. It's just – it doesn't matter who you are how good you are. When luck's not on your side, you lose, you know. Mm-hmm. When uh, when they top deck that snowman eater, that one out, or like, just game there's nothing you can do and it's just unbelievable really but it happens mm-hmm. and it's just what it is playing cards you know you see it every day in poker and gambling and sports everything you know the bad beats the coolers the sick stuff it's just crazy you know over and over so uh yeah man i uh i never could get another win as much as i tried and uh a lot of great players uh did get more wins like tyree and billy but yeah, I know I gave it my all and had seven tops and did what I could. So yeah, I was okay with it, you know. And I'm okay playing old and, you know, maybe if a game changes one day, maybe we'll see. If we'll play an event or two. Who knows? But mm-hmm. uh, who knows where it will go? You know what they'll do and what will happen, or maybe one day they'll run like an old tournament live or something. You know, who knows? So. Um, because they were talking about that, too, a bunch of the big names. We're talking about maybe renting out, like, a hall one day and, and just running, like, their own private big thing and covering yep. it, you know, because it'd be huge. Everyone would do it, you know. They all love it. And uh, and it would be super drawn upon, and everybody would love it. So uh, I'm sure that'll happen one day down the road. And, uh, yeah, it's just really cool looking back. It was just, like, childhood memories, you know. Like, it was, there was nothing like it, you know, when you're, like, 16, 17, being able to travel and with the guys and, you know, it was just unbelievable. Really, man, it was just great times. You know, when ever since you quit the game, uh, did you ever think about maybe like trying to come back and ever try to get like that second title that you've been wanting? Like, you didn't, like not like just a, yeah. like a WCQ, but like even just like a YCS or something like or something like that. Yeah, it was it was in my mind. It just it just didn't resonate because poker is just so much bigger. You know, like yeah, for me, winning the big tournament would be so much bigger. You know, like not even just the money, just. So knowing I won like both, you know, now my mind's just so far on poker and the game's gotten so big for poker and if he keeps blowing up, it's like so hard to come back to Yugi, you know, that the prizes are just so, you know, it's just not there for what poker is. I'm playing poker every night for, you know, what they're playing for in the, the whole jump, you know, it's just, so it's like, an, it's almost like a no brainer just not to. Yeah, it's kind of like me with when it comes to like playing any other card game like Magic or Pokemon. It's like, yeah, I know how to play them, but it's like I would rather like all this time I'm playing Pokemon or if I ever like decided to ever get into Magic, like I would rather spend this time playing Yu-Gi-Oh and like getting better at the game I already know I'm like I'm good at and just get even better. Right. Well, that was another thing because I thought about getting into Magic. It was the same thing, you know. It looked really intriguing. The cards are expensive. The trophies look cool, but it's like I've already invested so much in poker now. You know, like when I quit the game. When I quit Yu-Gi-Oh, I was just full-timing poker then and just loving it. You know me, I'm just totally into whatever I do. I'm, it's who I am, you know. I'm just totally overdoing what I'm doing, you know. This yeah. is what I do. So, uh, like Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, just excessive in what I do, going, playing, everything. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, so now it's all just in poker. It's the same thing, you know. I'm watching the videos, playing. So, it's, it's kind of like the same feel, but it's not, you know. It's because it's for money and it's different. But, yeah, it's like the same kind of thing, the strategy, the bluffing. You know, that was always my game. In, uh, in, in, in Yu-Gi-Oh, poker. you know, it's a bluff. So, in poker, it just translated really well, you know. Yeah, but were there any other kinds of translations that you had, like like playing so much of Yu-Gi-Oh and like kind of bringing that over into poker? Yeah, I would say um, 
There's a lot of stuff. Just like knowing people like from the game, like like because you play tournaments like in Yu Gi Oh, then it's exactly what poker is. You know, you're playing a tournament to beat people, so it's just you're already so well trained at it. You know, I've done them like my whole life, so it's like these guys are coming in playing their like tournament. You know, for the weekend in the casino and taking their little shot, and you know they watch it on TV and have you know. But I'm like. I'm a tournament player already, you know, I know how to play rounds and get deep and stuff. And it does. There's some of the stuff that's the same and a lot that's different too, but it's just interesting. Cause, um, I remember back in the day I went to the, uh, the jump Jeff one. It's the one that they're uh, playing now, uh, Edison format. I don't know if you remember that. It was a huge jump. Yeah. It's yeah. It was, um, the, la- it was the very last one before they switched over to, uh, to a YCS's, it was a lot. It was a yeah, it was huge. Yeah, and it was just huge. a huge, huge part of our career, and like we loved it. It was just it totally drew us into the game, like what it was. You know, mm-hmm. I ended up uh, beating some really great players. I uh, I beat Rodrigo, and I'll never forget. He had the looking back at it now, I still remember it because he had the poker chips. He was playing poker then. He was a little bit older, like in uh, you know, and where he's from, you can play poker online or whatever. So he was playing. Uh, he had the chips on the on the table. And while I'm playing him, he's shuffling the chips. So I just it was a memory I remember because uh he was at Worlds too. Uh <laughs> we replayed at Worlds. I beat him at New Jersey and he ended up beating me at Worlds. He FTK'd mm-hmm. me. And uh yeah. it was just a funny thing because uh before I was good and like before I won and people knew me, I uh, played him and beat him. And I just remember him like playing with the chips and being really like, you know, just knowing what he's doing with the cards and like movement. So, yeah, a lot of this stuff translates over because, like, in poker, like, you shuffle your cards. Like, like you almost do the same moves, like, even with your cards. Like, when I'm at, like, a casino or card room, you'll be, you know, you know the shuffle, like, with your hands to look mm-hmm. confident. It's the mm-hmm. same thing. It's all the same, you know, just confidence and uh, presenting yourself as, like, a, a player, you know. It's all the same. Just competition is like a sport, you know, like golf. <laughs> you know, it's just you, you, you coming after someone else, you know. Yep. So how would so, yeah. you pre- so how would you present yourself then uh, nowadays in poker? Um, well, there's a couple ways. It depends. You uh, you sort of take what they give you, right? You um, if you're at a real passive table, maybe you come out aggressive and uh, try to come real in their face, or maybe if you're at like a real aggressive table, guys just throwing around money and not caring, and maybe you're just sitting back, you know, just relaxing, waiting, you know, not saying much, not doing much. In poker, it's different. You know, your your strategy changes like every, almost every hand and every session. That's where it differs from Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is just so consistent in what it is, you know. Like every time, like the same, you know, the same plays, like the same like uh, strategy. But in poker, it just changes so much because there's so many variables and cards and percentages and unknowns, you know. Mm-hmm. But in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's just, it's, it's almost the same. You know, the 8,000 life points is just the same. So, uh, yeah, poker's just uh, differs a lot, like the strategy. But yeah, it's the same in some ways, but a lot different. Like I mm-hmm. said. So, so what made you decide to get out of Yu Gi Oh and then kind of step in, more into poker? Um, it just I felt uh, I felt like uh, not outmatched. I just didn't feel like I could win a big tournament. And for me, it's just all the drive. I'm ultra competitive, you know. Like I care too much about winning. Like it just. It kills me to lose, you know. I'm not a sore loser, but it's just I want to try. If I if I know I can't win a tournament, I won't play it even. It's just yeah. who I am, you know. So, uh, so yeah, I played that Chicago Nationals. I had the Dragon deck, and I don't know. I did decent. I won a couple and just didn't do that well. Lost through like six or seven rounds and just, I don't know. I just fell out. I could feel like I was out, out of love with the game, you know. Mm-hmm. Like it had passed me by and the cards were just different and, Seemed like other people loved it. I was like, I don't know. I just want to take a break and see how it goes. And poker was awesome. You know, it was just so fun. And it brought like a new element of like what Yu-Gi-Oh was, you know, like meeting new guys and new people and new strategy and learning stuff and making money, obviously, like from the start, like poker, it's so easy, you know, like sometimes you'll, uh, you'll just sit down and uh, just win. And then there's other times you'll just lose. That's what makes it hard. Like it's because it's quote unquote gambling, you know. So, um, cause it's, it is, it is in a casino, you know, they did yeah, a, a skilled game, but it's still in a casino and yeah. as much as you want to think it's this aces lose, you know, 18% of the time. So that's where it's like, you, you know, you can never for sure win, right. It's just cards. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, every card game is like that. Like, there's always going to be like an element of luck or whatnot. But right. But but even with like Yu-Gi-Oh and and poker or whatnot, it, even though there's like a uh, a level of luck involved, you're still seeing like the consistent players like like topping. You like oh so, exactly poker Yu-Gi-Oh. It's all the same. The best yeah. players are all the best. Um, mm-hmm. they all talk to each other. It's 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 literally it's 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 almost mind-boggling, mm-hmm. like how the same the communities are, but they're different. You know, because like. It's money involved and people like borrowing people money and it's just a whole different thing, you know, mm-hmm. it goes from like cards to like really, uh, you know, in your face, like money, like it's just a different game because they're your opponents and it's so like different of a, a mindset, you know, like going to the casinos and like playing Yu-Gi-Oh is just like fun and happy, you know, a poker can be stressful and tough, but yeah, it's the same where the great players all win and the bad players all lose, you know, it's the same thing. Have you ever Nothing like? Changes. Have you ever like ran into any like Yu-Gi-Oh players at all? Just out of curiosity, in, I have, on the poker tables. I have actually, yeah. Believe it or not, I actually have a couple times. Um, a couple local guys from here, like probably four or five of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. just uh, maybe even more, six, seven. Yeah, yeah, they're around, man. Everyone, uh, everyone thinks the same in these kind of games. You know, it's just <laughs> uh, we're all sort of like brothers in the way we play cards. You know. Yeah. So that's what, but uh. Everyone has a different walk of life, but it's cards brings everyone together, you know, and that's what's yeah. so cool with it. Yeah, it really does, man. I mean, like, I don't know how many friends, like, I've made over the, the course of the game. I'm sure you can definitely say the oh, same thing. Oh, man, too, it's about... unbelievable, man. Some of the guys and people you meet are just, and just connections for life, you know, like people I would never have met, you know, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, in poker, it's sort of happening the same thing. And I've been uh, dabbling in sports cards lately because they've been real hot, like NBA and football and, baseball hockey so uh so yeah man it's just cool like people from different walks of life you know Mm -hmm. like i know a doctor a teacher you know i know everyone you know it's just cool because they're all different but they're all the same like i said because everyone comes together with cards you know and strategy Mm -hmm. so it just makes for really fun stuff like i said uh like what we used to do you know hanging out having fun playing games drinking you know sports the whole nine I don't know. Oh man, I, I love it when I can like combine like sports and Yu Gi Oh kind of together in like one little thing. Like oh, one thing man. I one thing I always love to do is when I always travel out to like the like the the big U S cities, is that if if they had a stadium like an mm-hmm. NFL stadium, I yep. always try to like get there and take a picture of myself in front of the team. Didn't matter if I hated the team, love the team, didn't matter. Yep. I just wanted to be like in front of the stadium when I was there. And that's yeah, just that's one thing I love doing. That's another really cool thing we did when um when we all went to the Toronto jump. Me, my bro Evan, uh, Cedar, Pateo, we all went. And we had a blast. We um, we went to a Blue Jay game, mm-hmm. and it was just awesome, you know, because no one's there. No one loves, no one likes baseball there, you know. It's a hockey place, you know. Yeah. So, so there's no <laughs> one there. We uh, we get cheap tickets. We move all the way up, and it's just a blast of a game, you know. It's a cool field, and no one's there. Uh, yeah, we just had a ball, had a real ball with it, you know, drinking, having fun, relaxing, and uh. Yeah, so we checked out that park, and we went to a game in uh, Columbus. We went to a hockey game, and that was awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, those guys were just great guys, Mateo and them. And we went to uh, another one. We went to Atlanta's. We went to a hockey game when we went to the jump, the one that we topped. Mm-hmm. Um, it was 2012. We went to a big hockey game, and Mateo uh, actually ended up touching Ovechkin's jersey. Oh, it's nice. Funny, funny thing we all remembered. You know, he was a goof, and they got mad at him. They were like, dude, you got to watch out. Like, hey, that's it. I want to touch Ovi, you know, the goat. <laughs> yeah, so, it, it was – what's cool about some of these places is that, like, the convention centers, like, they were, like, really close to to some of these arenas and stadiums. Like, like in yeah, Columbus, man. like, Nationwide Arena where the Blue Jackets played, that was, like, deadly close to the convention center. And, Wasn't it? Yeah, PNC Park in Pittsburgh, like, that wasn't too far off from, from the venue either. I think – I remember when – Pittsburgh had their nationals the first time, like when they combined the North yeah. American together. There was a mm-hmm. Pirates game happening on the Friday night, and mm-hmm. so many friends were telling me, "Yeah, we're going to go see the Pirates play and whatnot." So, and mm-hmm. and again, like where you would play in Toronto, um, where they played like the the Rogers Arena, the the Rogers Center, where uh, they formerly known as the Sky Dome, was like yep. right next to the venue. So it was always a common theme for a lot of guys to. Like go see a sporting event, like while they're like you know quote unquote vacationing in whatever yeah, man, spot that awesome. they're in. Right, yeah. it made it made the whole thing funner. You know, you lose the tournament, but but you still got something to do. You know, yeah. while your while your buddy's in there crushing it, you're like you're texting him. You're like you're like man, you're like man, it couldn't be me, but 
hey, I'm at this beautiful park, you know, life couldn't be better. <laughs> you're out of state, you're, you're missing the crappy weather, you're loving, you're loving life, you know. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, there's nothing like it, you know, out with the fellows, you know. Nothing yeah, like it, man. I mean, it really is, too. I mean, like, I... I don't think like we would have ever been able to have that dinner that we had uh, in Toronto if it were like we would never would have had it if it weren't for you, Gil. Like we wouldn't have ever like been able to like find a time to go out and like spend some time together because like we live like far away. Like you and I were yeah. roughly like five five and a half hours like drive away, so like we're a distance off. But like it's these events that you know help us come together. Like we can go out mm-hmm. and do that stuff. And like next time, like I want to go down to Detroit. Like when the when the LA Kings come, it's like I want to go see like Kings Red Wings. Mm-hmm. Want to go to the the new arena because uh, oh you know, yeah, for sure we're gonna we're gonna don't even worry about it. It's, you know what's yeah. gonna happen. Exactly um, that, and the, or we know like Rob Cedar's a big Detroit Red Wings fan as well, so you know that like, he would be down for it as well. Yeah, man, we're gonna have. I know, a ball. Yeah, I know, but Garrett's a Tampa Bay Lightning fan, but I know he would totally want to come down. Like anyway, yeah, he's it's totally gonna be down. awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna we're gonna get the whole game together. We're gonna relive old times, get all silly and drunk, and have a ball, eat good, everything, the whole nine, man. Yeah, man, I, I, I can't wait to do uh, all that stuff once once all the borders open up again. But it, it's still pretty harsh in, uh, in Canada, particularly Ontario, where I'm in right now. It's the, the everything's still like pretty closed. For it, so it's it's hard to kind of do anything around here. Uh, yeah, to, like, I just um, I just seen an article earlier. They were talking about it, the border services. And uh, mm-hmm. I sent it to a Canadian buddy. It wasn't much. It was just small info that they want to open. and They're just trying to like do restrictions and. Talking about, like, they might need, like, a hotel thing for you to stay in one of their, like, quarantine hotels or something. You know, like, some weird stipulation that they're talking about. But who knows what will happen. Yeah. You know? It, it, it's it's tough right now on a lot of people, too, because, like, there have been so many times where, like, I've wanted to, like, yeah, I wish I could go out and travel and do this and do that or whatnot. And, you know, we can't do the same things that we want to do, especially, like, playing, like, Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments right now. Like, it, like IRL Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, it's really tough, too. So Yeah, man. Well, uh, like, a couple of the... Uh, couple of the local guys that still actually play actually um one guy uh back in the day um me and my buddy were really close friends with we went to school with one of the kids his name's uh brady hooker he uh he's really good now like in current Yu-Gi-Oh, he's had a couple tops like in the last couple of years and we sort of like uh he we cut like, he wasn't great when we met him and he ended up getting a lot better like playing with us so we wanted to like show him the way and get him good and he ended up being like really good like right away he was really good like like naturally talented and uh he did well at my nationals like had some wins and he ended up doing really good the last couple of years and i talked to him and he uh he's just missing the modern the current play you know like they the guys want to play and compete you know yep. and i understand i don't play but i understand the competition guys want to get their their win you know mm-hmm. get their big their big win under their belt so uh so yeah man it's uh it's just cool stuff. I'm excited for stuff to start kicking off and see what happens. I'm sure I'll still follow. Maybe I'll pop up in an event and just hang out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because you, because right now I'm assuming you're playing like online poker for the time. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing online. Uh, I'm doing some live. It's back, but it's just not as interesting with all the restrictions and whatnot. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, I'm doing uh Yu-Gi-Oh online like with Joe with the matches and some goat here and there when they have it and uh, yeah poker and that's pretty much it yeah because uh, you were uh, you participated in the the goat format tournament that happened uh, yesterday unfortunately i was busy yes, so i couldn't I uh i couldn't participate in that so uh was that your first event that uh you played Oh like for like a while aside from like whatever you did with joe um i played the other one the clash of champions one right and i took fourth I lost to two good players that had duo game three with Chaos Turbo. So it was just a really close. Uh, I took top four, and uh, they were good players and played great. Johnny Lee and uh, the other guy. Um, don't remember his name, but uh, I remember Johnny. Um, but, yeah, I ended up doing decent in that, and it was just fun, you know, playing with all the legends, uh, Provic and them, and the guys I always looked up to that I started originally playing with. I was like, man, these guys are still playing. <laughs> Like, man, I always looked up so much to Dale, you know? He's such, yeah. a, such a legend in my eyes. Yeah, d- definitely that, especially since you've came to all the all the Toronto regionals. Like, you, oh, that's, man, that, you guys, see him there all the time. Like, dude, I couldn't believe, like, how consistent and just unbelievable, man. Like, the respect I had for those two, like, the brothers and the whole gang, you know? Mm-hmm. Aaron Noel just winning everything. And, man, their team was probably the best ever, you know? It was just what it was. 
Yeah, so how did it how did it feel to you know kind of play Yu Gi Oh again? That aside from like being with Joe, like you know you're oh, competing man, in the was, tournament. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was really really brought back memories. We were texting Cedar and texting that whole gang and everybody, and Evan was watching and we were texting playing. It was really fun, man. It was unbelievable, man. It's great memories. I'm really glad they did it. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it was- they keep this stuff up, man. Yeah, we're we're hoping so because I, I do have like a bit of a hand in that too. I I usually do like commentary for them. Unfortunately, just yesterday I was I was busy. I just couldn't do it. But uh, I, I I usually commentate whatever events that they have. So yeah, I heard that. That was really cool. I yeah. love the Twitch and Discord and everything. I'm all for. It. Yeah, it, it's a great outlet too for like for all these old players that you know still have that Yu Gi Oh bug, but they just don't want to like re- have to relearn and retool themselves to like a new format but they can kind of you know they can take a break from Yu-Gi-Oh and like say oh like I feel like playing some Yu-Gi-Oh like let's go to a format that I'm like very familiar with and you know you can like go back to it and like it's there's like change for it is, isn't going to happen so much just because like we already it's a set format that's been around mm-hmm. for so many years so it's like you can like take a break for bits and then you know you can go back and like not really have to skip a beat well um yeah, we've been playing the Edison format too lately, like I mentioned, and it's mm-hmm. just really interesting to go back and look at it because you play it now and it's easier in hindsight, you know, looking at the decks and the card choices because everything's easier in hindsight, right, like after it's yeah. done. So uh, now everything's changed. Like they had like an Edison tournament on Dual Book and uh, Black Wings won with uh, Dark Bribes and Royal Oppression. So everything was just different. So it was just incredible to see the change, you know, in years and how people's thinking changes and people get smarter and, you know, it's crazy. Really, it was unbelievable. I really was drawn to it. So, yeah, it brought me right in. I'm back and playing old stuff. I'll be around doing that for a while, I'm sure. Did you ever play GOAT format, like, when it was actually, like, the like the actual format, like, way back when? Man, I wish. I um, I remember reading the old matches. Uh, cause I, honestly, I got into Yu-Gi-Oh a couple years past that. Yeah. I, um, I was just a later bloomer. Like I said, like 08, 09. And, uh, yeah, I remember reading the old matches. And I was like, man, those cards are cool. They're so like different and slow and controlling and, you know, every card's like one for one. So it's just different. So, uh, yeah, man, I wish I would have. <laughs> So when when you play all these old formats with with Joe and and the way whenever you play gold format, um, you know, is it uh, do you find it a little bit like trickier or a little bit or like at least a lot different from compared to when you played it like way back when? Just because like you have um, like this this hindsight knowledge, or is it, or you know, gotta explain that with me. Yeah, uh, it's different because you're not in the game, so like you're train of thoughts different you know like your timing's different and it's also mm-hmm. different because i'm playing joe and this he's like he's super world class you know yeah like super like knowledgeable and knows it's just different when you're playing back then you know no one's as smart as the smartest guys around you know like joe's so clever i always viewed him as one of the smartest in the game he's super intelligent mm-hmm. and uh he's hard to play against you know he he plays perfect so uh yeah, it's tough. It's difficult, like, looking back on the choices and trying to remember, like, the play. But it's all worth it for the fans, you know, for the guys that love the old stuff. Yeah. I'm a fan myself, you know. I remember watching your one, the Samorg one, the, um, all of them, <laughs> you know. I literally watched them. I watched yeah. every one. I was a fan before everything. I watched everything, man. It's just what I did. Beauty, I know. Well, we we've we've been so close, like for the last like little while since we first met. At, like, at I know. I can't and... believe it, man. I met you before I won, and everything was awesome. I know. You were just so the happy. nicest guy in the world, man. I was like, <laughs> this guy is awesome. I mean, I gotta it's... take this guy out and drink with him, and we did. And I was like, man, yeah. I was like, man, I never look back. <laughs> this guy's the best. Yeah, and then now that like you're a little bit older too, like, like you can like drink. Uh, yeah. You know, now at least in yeah, the states, I, because like, because I, yeah. I think when we met, you couldn't even you couldn't even drink at all. I think I legally uh, couldn't drink. I was sixteen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and then like you, and then after that, like we like stuff slowed down, and then yep. we couldn't really, and then like you kind of you kind of went your own way, which is which is cool, no matter. Yeah. And then like. And now everything's closed because of the pandemic. So, like, we really mm-hmm. don't have, like, the opportunity to be able to, like, say, let's go hang out. Let's go drink and whatnot. But, like, again, like, I just keep saying to this day, like, whenever, like, stuff opens up. And, like, especially when the Kings come to come oh, to man. Detroit. Like, that's that's going to be, like, the day I'm going like, to bring all the Detroit guys up and Windsor guys up. And, like, hey, we want to do this. Let's let's do this. Let's let's go hang out and let's go man, drink man. and whatnot. Yeah, we're going to have a ball. 
Yeah, for, uh, have a ball. For, for sure, man, hundred percent, man. And you know, now that uh, now that so many years have gone by, and now that you've like been out of Yu Gi Oh again. Uh, was there any reason why you wanted to come back, at least like to the level that you are, like, not like not playing like current Yu-Gi-Oh, but playing yeah. like the old stuff? With the old, yeah, yeah. It was just like I said, uh, we always like loved still reminiscing on old times. Like we would always talk about, like, man, that was so cool then. But no one had a way to like play, you know, like, and because everyone's caught up with life and this and that, and nobody was playing online, you know, just having fun playing old mm-hmm. stuff. So it's like uh, when I when I seen people doing it, I'm like, okay, I'll give it a shot and see who likes what. And everyone wanted to compete and play, so it's just fun. And COVID gave a lot, a lot of extra time, and we're like, uh, started playing it a little bit, and we're like, uh, yeah, this is great. Just gonna keep doing it, you know. And the videos, I really love making them, because the, we, uh, me and Joe, talk about what we're gonna do, like an old format, and we put it together, and it's just super fun seeing it all come together, you know, like mm-hmm. watch rewatching it the next, and it's just awesome. Like I said, I'm a fan, just like everybody. Yeah, you know? that's how I got into the game, watching it on TV. You know, everything, going to yep. the stores, getting the books with the Thunder Kings and the Light and Darknesses. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just what it was. Everyone loves it. You know, it's so fun. The tins. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm a fan, and everyone was watching the videos. It's unbelievable, man. So yeah, just all clicked and uh, just came together to what it is today, playing the old modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Like mm-hmm. I said, like Joe always says, a lot of the newer guys just don't know because they're newer, you know, they're younger, they don't know yeah. what it was, you know, and it's cool. Like Magic sort of has a thing where they do that, where a lot of like the poker guys were really big Magic players and they'll still play like the old formats, like modern, you know, and it's just cool that some games do that, you know, and you, yo, we always felt like it sort of missed that. So we're, we're, we're thinking if we sort of keep that around, that it will be there, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, we always thought that – because they don't care about the old cards, you know. They're not worth anything to them, you know. They want to sell new. So, uh, obviously, you know, they want to promote the new packs as as they should. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to try to take it back always and do a new deck, a new format, because there's so much to cover, you know. There's so many formats, cards, choices. And it's just fun, you know. It really is. Yeah, I, and I love doing that stuff, like playing the playing the old formats myself just because, like, I knew I was a – I wouldn't call myself like the best player, but I was like a very competent player and a very good yeah. player. So like I loved like playing that stuff too, and it's a nice, it uh, is. refreshing change of pace too. Because there's a lot of skills that I learned from playing like old Yu-Gi-Oh that I've been able to transfer into like newer Yu-Gi-Oh. Like for example, like we used to like chastise people if we ever like if we saw a lot of overextension. Like it was mm-hmm. it was so easily punishable when you ever just you see players like commit way too much oh, to the yeah. board every time when the yeah. guy plays into the tarantula, the mirror force. Yeah, yep, it was always the way to lose. Yeah, and, and then nowadays at Yu-Gi-Oh, it's more like it's almost like going almost almost all in on every single hand now. And, and yeah, that, it's that, exactly the different. opposite, and that and that was what really drove me away because yeah. it was almost the same thing. With, like the dragons was just play my whole hand, beat you, and it's just for me it was because I um I lost to Tyler Tabman when he won in two thousand and twelve. We yeah. played like a real bloodbath. It's a feature match still. It's up, but uh. Long story short, I got FDK'd game three. Couldn't even play cards. He ditched my whole hand, obviously. And, uh, you know, that's the moral of the story. You get FDK'd and you lose. And it sucks. So it just kind of drove me away, you know, losing like that all the time. And, uh, yeah, it sucks to lose like that when you just can't play. And So we're just going to play the skillful stuff, the old stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep bringing that back. As much as people like it, we'll keep feeding it. There's there's a million formats to talk about, you know, and a million choices and – we love it and people love it. So as long as it keeps going, we're going to keep going. Yeah. Cause there's definitely a demand for uh, people who want to play like the, the older formats and whatnot. Cause you know, there are those you get players who kind of got out of the game or took like a break, but they don't really want to yeah. learn anything new. Cause like I've been out of the, f- cause I've been out of the current Yu-Gi-Oh format right now for, let's say maybe like a couple months, just because the okay. pandemic's kind of like demotivated, demotivated me a little bit to play the game. Mm-hmm. So like when I'm like looking into the game and look at these new decks, I'm like, I feel like I'm learning an entirely new game now when I have to like learn a format. It's like, Oh my God. Like, and I barely took any breaks during like my entire tenure of playing the game. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like a, a her completely like taxing, like relearning process having to learn like a new format, especially like in the middle of it when everybody already knows like what's going on and you don't. Yeah. It's, it gets, it's it really gets hard. tough. Yeah. So I feel like I might step in maybe 
like when everything eases up a bit, but at the same time where like maybe we have like a new format where, okay, mm-hmm. I can like breathe a little bit and like kind of almost like start fresh kind of thing. See, and, and that was sort of the draw for me for like go is where you asked me that. Did I play then? I didn't. And uh, I thought a lot of the cards were really cool. Uh, mm-hmm. Serpent and Thunder and, you know, just all the warrior cards. I thought there's some, I'm so drawn to them, duo and graceful. And yep. just there's, there's a different level of skill, like you said, of conserving and, like, managing life points. It's just a different game. So I had to sort of learn myself. I felt like a rookie and a noob, you know. I, yep. A couple months ago, I had to learn the GOAT stuff because it's what they were playing. I didn't love it the most, but I had to learn it. So uh, we play that now. GOAT and Edison, everyone's playing. They're doing an Edison format next month. Uh, I'm going to participate in that, too. Uh, I'm going to play something. I don't know what yet. Uh, still mm-hmm. have to test more. Everyone's play testing. There's just, it's really cool because the community is playing nonstop games on dual book of uh, Edison and Goat. Yep. So it's just really cool, like the memories, you know? So it's awesome. Yeah. And and when Jeff Jones won that event, like like the quick draw Dandy Warrior, like that deck wasn't even like publicly known. Like very few people no. really knew about that deck. And so it will be really cool to, if you revisit that format it's like okay now everybody knows about that deck everybody know how how that deck works it's like mm-hmm. so is that going to be like the top deck or is that going to be like the deck See that, that wins and that that's what makes it so interesting is that even goat format right now quote unquote goat format people aren't even really using natural goat and the card scapegoat and meta yeah. because they're just too slow and they don't fit the deck and chaos turbo is quicker and it gets to duo and you know your, your power snatch premium so uh so really go format now people don't even use it as much the go and the, the, those strategies thousand eyes so uh, yeah go formats really turned uh warrior and chaos turbo format and and it looks like edison's turning to like you said some plants the black wings and d heroes and all sorts of crazy light sworn strategies and yep really interesting like you said really interesting how mm. hindsight changes everything it really does because I mean, you could play because because at Edison like it was a completely wide open format like it could be anything yep. like I remember playing that event I played against Black Wings I played against mm-hmm. Monarchs I played against Sabers mm-hmm. and, and like and it was it was completely out of the blue like it, I didn't know like what to expect because everybody was playing like something like different like I feel like I played like almost like a different deck every single time I went in there and I was in there yeah, playing same with, here. Uh, and I was mm-hmm. either playing like Dark Samorg with like I was playing Dark Samorg Monarchs like that's what mm-hmm. I was playing. So it was yeah, like I really remember. weird. It was a cool dark. And, yeah, and it was like really weird how like everything was so wide open. And like when when I heard Jeff Jones won, I looked at the deck list. I'm like, I I I had no idea that this was going to be the deck that won. And like I never I never expected it in any way. And like I think I built the same deck on my on my Game Boy game. And like mm-hmm. okay, now I see why this won. Yeah, but like was... I would have never thought of this at all. Like I thought Drill Warrior was like whatever this card is like pretty pedestrian whatever no, right like, it, it seemed it seemed bad like on paper right? yeah because he found the turn. combo he um i remember he um he was at locals because he was at my local and that's what got me so good obviously he was just playing jeff and all the goats in the game you know mm-hmm. thunderpants and uh uh Pateo and uh everybody evan was amazing and they were all just so good early uh, Paul McCann, all them. So it was just like a million tops in the room before I even topped mm-hmm. and won. So I was just so confident, you know, playing against Jeff every week, mm-hmm. getting destroyed for, you know, a year or two. And uh, Jeff won that jump. It was the same year, I believe, I won, 2010. And uh, mm-hmm. the game changed so much, obviously, when they uh, released the Infernities yep. and x Savers. And then, like I said, looking in hindsight – if everybody would have known the frog of CK that Joe and his buddies were talking about, I probably wouldn't even have won, you know? Yeah. Because I just would have been FTK and a couple rounds wouldn't have happened the way they did. Yeah, because I remember when like uh, that Frog FTK first came out, like the effect failure also just recently got released, but nobody was really like using it. But that was like the card to stop Substitute from like oh, bringing no, off like no, everything. When, um, no, when that's a fun fact. When uh, it first came out, it actually yeah. didn't exist yet. Effect Vader. Oh, no, oh, okay. That was why my 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 um my deck contained Hainwada in the uh, side deck. Oh, okay, Hainwada. Yeah, the one that prevents you from taking like effect damage or yep. for like one hit. Yeah. Yep. So I um I was Joe talks about it in his video how my deck was a tad more prepared. 
for mm-hmm. FTK, but it just didn't matter. I got really lucky and didn't play it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's the, sort of the story that hindsight's everything and on cards is everybody knows what to do after it happens. You know, that's the easiest thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly that. Because uh, I, because I remember I created a different variant of uh, like Dragon Rulers, like when they got banned after. Uh, when they got like the first ban, so they banned all the babies. So, pretty mm-hmm. much like shortly after you stopped playing the game. Yes. And I feel like I broke the game open a little bit more because I ran like skate. I decided to run scapegoats in my in my dragon variants. Okay. Because uh, it was one of those things where like you could open up very soft, you could open up very passively, or you can open up really aggressive. And I don't like opening up aggressive at all. So, I thought scapegoats was like the easiest way to like open up so passively. Right. And uh, just pass and, and not do anything. Yeah. Not do anything. Let them make the, it lets them make the first move kind of thing. Right. So, commit everything. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then I can make like formula synchron and I can like make like huge ass, I can make huge synchros, synchro plays, which. Uh, I thought of Ally of Justice Decisive Armor, which, like, Bujins was a big deck, but they kept a lot of light monsters in hand, and Decisive Armor would, like, strip them of all their, like, their, their, their light monster hand traps, and, like, would just destroy them. Like, that's what that was. So I kind of created that idea. And, like, looking back at hindsight, like, if I were to play that format again, like, I would definitely run skate. Like, I would run probably three scapegoats instead of the two that I won, uh, that I topped a regional with. So, like, it's so yeah. easy to kind of look at hindsight of, like, yeah, okay, we, it's, it's a lot easier now. But it's amazing with that hindsight, how much it completely changes the format. Like like right. as you said with goat <laughs> like you said with goat format, barely anybody runs goats anymore. People are right. running just like the Chaos the Warrior card. deck. You're like, yeah. you're like, where's goat, man? We're we playing goat format. Yeah. You need to change the name of this format, man. It's, yeah, no it's, like, it, it. it's complete it's complete irony. Isn't it absurd? absurd? It's We're so absurd so how, yeah. how cards work. I know. But yeah, right? it's, it's funny. Like I'm I was thinking about my old deck. I'm like, uh, man, I'm looking at my deck list. I'm like, you know, it's also easy to change all the card choices after you win even. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah, this card sucks. And what the heck was I thinking on this one? And you know yeah. what I'm saying? What side deck choice was this? Because it didn't do anything. But yeah, it's all easy after, you know? Yeah, it's so- harder when you do it. Huh? Yeah, of course. Because, like, we've had a lot of people, like, on, like, every single deck profile that would say, like, yeah, this card didn't really help me out today. I would have taken this out had I have known, like, how bad right. it was. Like, it looks good on paper and everything. You know, they're always going to get, like, a comment like that. Like, I know I've done a comment like that or two on, like, when I've been, like, deck profile and whatnot. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. That's I, just, I, I that, that's just life, you know? You always, everything you do, you always look back and something's different, you know? Something yeah. You could have changed to do it better, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just cool that it all came together, and yeah, it was a bunch of cool friends that I met along the way, and so many guys, you know, just a list of so many cool guys out of state, and you know, you still see some of them playing poker, and online, some of them you hear about, it's really cool, man, it's a mm-hmm. really cool industry and uh, community, poker, and uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, and cards, sports cards, mm-hmm. yeah, man, it's where it, where it is for me. So, yeah, so... So when you told me about all the people that you hung out with, all those Michigan guys, because like you listed off like a, a like a number of players that have been like excellent yep. and fantastic throughout the oh, years. Oh, dude, man. I've played with so many like legends. <laughs> yeah, man. So how did how did they help you like kind of become like the player that you became? Because like you were relatively like unknown yeah. uh, before you had your Nats top. I like I don't think yep. like anybody really knew of you. But no, like, it was just I, I was you. just local, very local. You knew of me because you were almost connected to here, like Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Because of Canada. So um so yeah, I was very local and they knew um it's a really funny story actually. Um we were hanging out a week before nationals. Me, uh my best friend Evan, uh Pateo, Cedar, Thunderpants, the McGarrett, the gang. We always hung out at McGarrett's because he had like a real big house and uh a real cool finished basement. Mm-hmm. So we would chill in the basement and play poker. Like that's where we started playing poker and we learned it there and played like fun ten dollar games and you know jostled around with cards and Yu Gi Oh and video games, so that was always like our hangout spot like before the tournaments or after. So uh, so a week before we're hanging out and Pateo makes just like a random funny statement. He's like uh, he's like I'm gonna pick Corn Pops to win nationals because they always did their little uh list of pros that they would pick and yeah. there's always like a dark horse, you know, because you win the whole thing if the dark horse wins. Because nobody picked him, you know, it's like extra points or whatever. Yeah. So uh Pateo actually funny enough picked me. I don't know if it's his he was always really smart and his intelligence told him that I was gonna do decent. And uh yeah, he, he wrote it down on the wall that I was gonna do good at Nats and he picked me and I won. <laughs> he picked me to go far. I was one of his names and I actually ended up winning, he was right. 
Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Luck had it that he called it. And Cedar changed my deck for me to win. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, so how did these guys, like, being, like, hanging around with them, how did they help you, like, get better and, like, become, like, how you became, like, the national champ and, like, a, a perennial, like, topper after that? Oh, ex- exactly how everyone does. Being terrible and losing to them and mm-hmm. them, them, them beating me, how I beat people after, you know? Tell mm-hmm. me how much I suck, you know? Because it's what it is, you know? You first play and they're all better than you. And those guys were studs. Yeah, Garrett and uh, Cedar and Pateo, they were so good at the game. I looked up to them, and they had so many tops, and they just showed me the rope. You know, they were super nice and mm-hmm. really great guys and taught me everything, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, so, you got to give it up to them. So, would, you, would it be fair to say that, you know, if you're, you know, not as skilled or if you want to get better, is to, like, really – really start to like pick the brains of like the players that are like clearly better than you to like, kind of help, oh, like, help improve the game. Yeah. If you want to do anything, you got to play against people that are better than you. You got to play to your competition. Yeah. If you're playing all goofs and people who lose and don't know what they're doing, then the same thing's going to go for you. You're not going to get better. It takes hard lessons to get good and you got to lose and feel bad to win, you know? Yeah. There's a cause... lot of feeling bad, a lot of losing to Jeff. I didn't beat him for a long time, you know? Mm-hmm. He, he beat me for a long time. He was great. He was one of the best ever, you know. But yeah. then the tide turned, you know, in 2010 when I got real good. And, got an ad champ under your belt, Ben. Yeah. It was, <laughs> like I said, you got to thank the guys before me, like Jeff and them, because they, they really beat me up bad at locals and regionals and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. that, and and that's how I always felt about myself where it, it's like, if I want to get better, like I got to talk to like people who are better and like, this is not to toot my own home or anything, but like, I was like one of the top guys at my local for, for a long time. Oh yeah. And, and then that's just, and, and it's, it's hard to kind of get better. Like if you're within your own local, like if everybody you're beat, if you can like parentally like beat everybody else, it's, it's hard to improve in that. Um, yeah. But one thing I did have is that I had one guy who, who I like kind of trained up and then he started like going out of town and started learning from like players who were better than me. And then when he like came back to like my town, I started learning from him. And then like, I got even better than what I was before. And then I finally got my first one because of it. Yeah. Cause I'm like, okay. Like clearly like I'm, I wasn't the best the entire time. There were points where like I dropped off where I would call myself, I wouldn't call myself the best anymore in town. Like if this guy's better now, let's go learn from them. Like, let's see what do they have that's, that they're beating me with now that I don't have. Like, why are they beating me, like, on a consistent basis? And I'm always thinking, if you want to get better at the game, like, why don't you go talk to the people that are actually better at yeah, this game? Yeah, that's, you know, that's exactly uh, – it's cliche. It really is. It really is. But um, but it's just what it is. Um, To get better, you have to learn to get better, and you have to learn from someone who is better or you won't get better. Yeah, because so, at, at, um, yeah. at one point, we're all going to be underdogs in this game. In, or, like, yeah, in every other is. game. Yeah, we're all yeah, underdogs. Sport, in- everything, life, you know, you got to yeah. learn. You gotta learn the way before you go. You know you can't. You gotta uh, walk. You gotta crawl before you walk. You know it's cliche. It's what yeah, it yeah. Is. exactly that. And like I'm sure there have been cases where like you have been an underdog and you've won. Like example, oh, man. national championship. Yeah. And then there have been times where you've like were not the underdog. You were like the like yep. the, the underdog. overwhelming and then favorite. You've lost. And yep. then you've lost. And like I've had that happen. Couldn't too believe it happened. after. Yeah, couldn't it, believe exactly. Lost it. Yeah. Exactly. That. We've all had like the hard losses, but like the easy, uh, but like the really awesome wins too. Like it happens, but you know, like there are times like I'm thinking, like why, like learn from the best, like learn from these guys. And like every time I would like roll through these podcasts, I learned something new. It's like, man, I never thought of that before. Like why didn't I ever think of this? So like I, I think know, I could have been a lot better player now if I have like if I had learned this like a while can, ago. Can you only imagine if they had had these things then? No, right? Yeah, right. You can only imagine how it would have been. <laughs> Dale and those guys, man, all they knew and Lazaro. Yeah. Deck choices. And man, those are so smart and ahead of everybody. So it's like, yeah, man, if they had these things, then everybody would have been winning, you know? Yeah, because, like, I, I mean, you know, association is a really big thing right now. Like, who you know can, like, really right. help you out. Discord. In the and everyone's in there. Everyone's got a community now. Yeah. A team. Uh, a group of people they know that knows this and that, you know? Yeah, but it wasn't as easy, like, way back then. No, back it was, dude, it was a lot harder. That's what, that was what got us good, you know? Learning. Yeah. It, was, it was, it was really live then. It was, you had to meet people in person. So yeah. every Friday, it was a local joint, Pandemonium, and uh, it was just really great players. Like, you'd play every week against the guy that just topped last month, a big, a big event, you know? Yeah. Because Mich- Could- Michigan's just huge, and people from different states, and Ohio, and Canada... So yeah, man. Yeah, because it's it, huge. Yeah, because like, it's really good to 
get yourself like diversified in terms of like people you know because um i'm gonna i'm at about 90 minutes away from toronto so there would be times where after my buddies and i would finish locals in my own hometown we would mm-hmm. drive over to toronto and then play their locals and we go to the same locals that like dale lazaro matt Pedal, like all of them that would go to and, yeah like, we would and we would learn stuff from them it's like oh like, man I, I never thought of that before it's, and like we got better and better and like there'd be some people from like Toronto, that would like if I go to like regional or something, they'd be asking me like, "Hey, where are you from?" And I tell them I'm from like I'm from this place, Peterborough. It's like the small town, so like they don't they don't think any they don't think like highly of you or something like that. It's like mm-hmm. okay, there's the small town guy, whatever. Let's beat him. And then I was like, no, well, guess what? Like I have I rubbed a lot of elbows with the Toronto guys, and yep. they really helped me and taught me and to get better. And guess and like I would beat like I'd surprise a lot of Toronto people. And like I've won events in Toronto before, and, so, and some of my buddies have too. And you know, we, we can surprise, we can surprise some guys, but it, again, it's, yeah. but it's because like we go out and we actually like talk to like the better, like the people we know that are better than us. Like exactly. you know, we, we put our ego. Up. Yeah. Like put your ego aside and say, okay, obviously I'm not the best. This guy's mm-hmm. clearly better than me. Like, what can I learn from this guy to get better? And a lot of people nowadays, especially nowadays, like they're very open with their information. Yeah. They're very happy. All, they're... You have to do is just, all you have to do is just kind of like ask or talk. Like that's, you might that's where the game, bit. that's where the game has changed. And yeah. poker also, because of technology and Discord and Twitch, everything's like you said, just more open. People know more now. There's yeah. More information, and it's just what it is. You have to adjust to it. So it's a yeah. different game now. There's different strategy and different, but it's all the same. It's just different. You got to move different. You know, you got to play a little different. You got to, because you know everyone knows more. So. Yeah. So you knowing that you have to adjust. So it's just all adjustments. It it really is, man. But you know, it's it's just nice that when you can when you have that kind of community like to to back you up, and mm-hmm. you can and you get better because like again, like Windsor, Detroit, like very big areas. There's so there's, there's a lot of people. Yep. There's like a very big pool of people that you can kind of pluck from. So like you got like a lot of great players that can come around. Like you know, Jeff Jones, Michigan yeah. guy. Like you can he can like really help you out and and that kind of stuff. Like and while like Peterborough like stuff, we don't have like a lot of fantastic players, but we're not too far from Toronto. So, you know, right. So you're, you're right around the alley. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. Right so, around the alley. Yeah. And we learned so many things just from talking to Dale Lazaro and all of them. It's like, Hey, mm-hmm. it's like, what about this play? And like, they do plays on us. Like, okay, I never thought of this play ever. Like, yeah. and like, I get beat. And I remember seeing Chris Pervic when he won like the class of champions. I'm like, I never, see, I've never thought I'd see like him play this before. I'm like, I would have made this play. Okay, now I see why he made this play. It's like it's mm-hmm. it's you know as, associating yourselves with these kind of people like really do make you better. Like you don't want to be the yeah. smartest person in the room when it comes to this kind of game. Yeah, there's uh, it's really cliche, like I said, but you can never learn enough. Yeah, it's just how it is in these games, and there's just so much with variables and luck and learning and situations where everything comes up different, you know, and you gotta keep learning and trying. Mm-hmm. And that's really another thing you can't give up, and you gotta keep trying, you know. I easily could have stopped playing or not tried or played Infernities or anything, but it's just going the extra mile, you know, putting in the extra work, studying more, uh, you know, play testing more with your friends is everything. Yeah. So, locals. so what would you say then to like all those like underdogs out there who kind of have like that middling ground where like they, they, they're just having a difficult time getting better because that's kind of the story where you are. You were this yeah. guy that nobody knew for like the longest yep. time. And yeah, then you come out all of a sudden and, and win a national championship out of nowhere. So what would you say to those guys that are kind of in the same shoes that you were before, like you won your championship? I would say stay true to who you are and what your game is, because that's what's going to get you far. Mm-hmm. Block out noise because people are going to tell you to do stuff that's not you because that's just life, you know, yeah. and cards and everything. But And it is cliche, but you just got to stay true to yourself. And that's what helped me get far, really, in cards. It helped me uh, – I just stayed true to myself and who I was and, and what worked for me. And it did. It worked. I um got off some cool bluffs. I did a couple cool things at Nationals, and it was cool. It all worked out. I got lucky. It's yeah. always better to be uh, lucky than good, right? <laughs> so, uh, and- yeah, one of, got some other good lucky tops, and I'm just grateful. You know, I'm blessed. Yeah, and I was so glad again, like when you won that. I'm like, oh my god, my corn pops really did it. I'm yeah. like, yes, awesome. Yeah, it was like, really my, happy, man. My man, my man. Oh, yeah, man. Billy, uh, Billy was right. He bet on me, luckily, and he, I won. I took it down. <laughs> he, he knew, he knew something. <laughs> kind of makes me wonder what kind of payout he got when he bet on you. Yeah, it must have been something, a couple hundred dollars, <laughs> something cool. You know, back back in the day, it was everything. You yeah, you win, you win, you win a couple packs. You were happy back then. 
Yeah. You know, extra money. It was fun, man. It was cool. <laughs> yeah, it was really man, fun. Man, corn pops, and I was I've been eagerly waiting to talk to you, man. I'm I'm so glad I was able to get you on, man. Thank, I appreciate you you coming out and being on the podcast, man. Yeah, any man. shout outs you any shout outs you want to give, man, before we go? Yeah. Uh, I want to shout out, like I said, my uh, best friend, my brother, uh, Evan. He's my, the one that even got me into the game, honestly. Uh, I wasn't even good, and he knew about tournaments. You know, He even showed me the way for locals and tournaments. I had no idea what I was even doing. I uh, I had heard about the game, and friends were playing it, but it was just all – you know, back in the day, we, we really just took the structured decks, and that's how it was, and we just sort of played like the show and just didn't know what we were doing didn't know rules would just play you know have fun and i met him when i was like 14 15 and we uh and we just started playing with our cards and uh he taught me that there was tournaments and i liked the game and strategy a lot so uh, just clicked and we uh kept playing and getting better together and all of us and the whole community and all our friends Mm -hmm. and it's just sort of where it took us was games and cards because i love it you know it's like like you love it and joe and everybody it's just awesome and yeah i want to shout out joe of course, uh, G Orlando and his channel. I'll obviously be on there again soon. We're going to record more stuff soon. Uh, Ryan Spicer and his channel. He's really cool. We're, uh, I got something in the works with him soon. Nice. Obviously, he's doing a lot of really cool stuff for the game. And uh, he plays poker also. So we, yep, we, we've did. talked before and done a lot of talking and texting. But, uh, yeah, man, I want to shout you out. You're my guy. And, uh Thanks for having me on. I uh, really love your channel, man. Every video to me is just like a treasure, you know. I'm just so excited Absolutely, to man. watch it. And I'm like, man, I'm wake up. I'm like, man, Bowie's got another one. I'm like, yeah. Appreciate it, I'm bro. Like, I'm so pumped. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Making the community <laughs> fun again, man. I know, it means man. the world to me. I don't know if you get to listen to a podcast all this week just because you're, you're already on it. So I don't know if you uh, yeah. <laughs> go back. I'll find something. You know me. <laughs> There's always something to watch. Yeah, like I said, I can, you can always learn, right? Exactly, exactly. Always, 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 always. Uh, always anyone be better. Else? Yeah, always. Anyone else, bro? Yeah, shout out Cedar, uh, all my guys, you know, everybody. Always yeah. Shout out all, all Michigan, man, all the Michigan players. There's really too many. Um, My parents, they were amazing. Shout them mm-hmm. out. They won't see this or care, but they were just – it matters a lot, you know, when you're younger playing. You need your support or you won't win. Yeah. You know, if, you're, if your parents exactly. don't want you to play and miss school and go, you, you won't have a chance. So if they didn't do that and weren't cool with it, I never would have won. So Fair enough for the world, you know. And it's like Joe told me, his parents would let him like use the car and go to locals. Everyone has their story of what their parents did, like to help their story, you know. Yeah, it's cool. It's just sure. so cool looking back on it. It is, man. Yeah, it's uh, like I, a I'm man. Simple. It's awesome. Yeah, just and quickly for me, like my parents like did not like me playing this game, but yep. whenever I drive, yeah, we're the same. Yeah. yeah, but whenever I like drive out to like Syracuse because my parent, like my I have like family there, so I, I would like hook up with like, my Syracuse friends, and they brought me to Edison. Like they, they we drove from Syracuse to Edison. I just had to drive to Syracuse, mm-hmm. and you know, and as much as they didn't like me playing the game, they did help in some sense. That like okay, they, right. they helped me travel around a little bit. So see, they it was the same for me. Yep, it, yep. Was, it was the same for me. It was like a love hate. Maybe yeah. my mom didn't like it as much. She wanted me to do this or that and jobs and this. But then my dad's just supported me. So it was like some, like you said, but like they support it, but they don't. So it's like, but it's cool because they're helping, you know, and they're yeah. giving you rides or whatever, or letting you use stuff. So it's awesome, you know. Yeah, Works they're, they're help. Yeah, as much as they might be there, so they're help, definitely helping in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. All right, Sean, man, thank you so much, man, for coming to the podcast. L- love you, brother, and I can't thank wait. Thank you so for much, man. When stuff opens up, man, we're gonna go. We're gonna go watch some sporting events together, man. We're gonna yeah, watch. We're, we're gonna tear it up. We're gonna drink. Uh, we'll have some summers be again. We'll find that Canadian stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely will, man. We'll bring right, back buddy. the real memories, man. Take it I easy, know, day. Right? Yeah, you have always a, girl, a pleasure, Thanks man. So, always a real pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on, bro. Yep. Thank you, man. Take it easy, bro. <laughs>
us yeah. all the wings and the drinking. Yeah, just we, we got to make it all come together, man.